ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد صلاه وسلاما دائمين متلازمين الى يوم الدين اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار all praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek his forgiveness, his guidance, and his assistance. And we take refuge with him from the evil within our souls and from the consequence of our misdeeds. <coughs> whoever Allah gives guidance to, none can mislead, and whoever he misleads, none can guide. I bear witness that there's nothing and no one worthy of worship besides Allah alone. He has no partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. We ask Allah to grant peace to him and to also have mercy on his family members, his companions, and everyone who follows in goodness and shows goodwill into the meeting and the reckoning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> to be Muslim is to be committed to the cause of God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't accept from us to claim Islam as simply an empty claim. Rather, you can't claim to be the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless you support the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the main lessons I would say that is to be taken from the stories of Bani Israel in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly reminding us of their tests and their trials. Of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَقَدْ أَتِينَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحُكْمَ وَالنُّبُوَةَ We have indeed given to the children of Israel the book, governance, and prophethood. And we grant them sustenance from all good things, and we granted them favor over all people. And we gave them miracles from the divine command. And they didn't differ until after knowledge came to them out of enmity and transgression between them. And then Allah says, In Allah, in the Rabbaka Yakhdi, Bainahum Yomu Kiyamati, Fima Kanofi Yachtalifun. Your Lord, He will settle the matter between them. He would judge between them on the day of resurrection concerning what they would differ. And then he says to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاكَ عَلَىٰ شَرِيعَةٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ Then we place you upon a sacred path from the divine command. فَاتَّبِعْهَا So follow it. وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And do not follow the whims, the desires, the lusts, the fancies of those who know not. It won't avail them from God in any way. And the wrongdoers, they are allies one of another. While God, while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the ally of the righteous, the ally of the pious, those who have taqwa. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he utilizes 
Sometimes the language of commerce, when he is trying to encourage us to do things and avoid things, but also he speaks in the language of warfare at times. He utilizes terms like wali and adu. Like he tells us that shaitan, inna shaitan lakum aduun fatakhiduhu adua. That shaitan, he is an enemy to you, so take him as an enemy. That some people are the uliya of Allah, some people are the uliya of shaitan. That there are the malaika and there are the demonic forces, the shayateen. He talks of victory and defeat, al khusran, wal ghalaba. Inna hizbullahi hum al ghalibun. Inna hizbullahi hum al muflihun. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala utilizes this language as a way to remind us that this particular world is a battleground. That this particular world and this life is a battleground between the forces of good and evil, between the demonic and angelic forces. And we have been put here uh, for redemption. We have not been put here to make this our permanent home. And anyone who tries to do so finds out soon that it is not possible. There was a young boy who used to serve the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. Apparently a teenager, according to the reports, apparently based upon the way the story ends, but this young boy actually was a, a Jewish boy. He would serve the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. Imam Bukhari reports this. <clears throat> He used to serve the Prophet. He would bring the Prophet his water for wudu. He would bring him his sandals, among other things. And one particular day, the boy, he got, he got ill, very sick. He didn't show up. And the Prophet, وسلم, he went to his home to visit him to see what was going on and found out that he was on his deathbed. And his father was sitting there next to him as he was ready to take his last breath. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu sat down and he said to the boy, testify, bear witness that I am God's messenger. The boy, he turned to his father, he looked at him for approval. He didn't want to disrespect his father. And his father responded, Ati' Abu al-Qasim, obey Abu al-Qasim. And the boy, he, he testified, he took shahada. And when the Prophet walked out of his home, he said, Alhamdulillahi anqadahu min nar And when one, one narration, anqadahu bi min nar Praise be to Allah that he saved him from the fire. Now, outside of many other lessons, but one particular lesson I think we can take from this story is that Iman means something, faith means something, and it's valuable to Allah and his messenger. And the Prophet وسلم, he wanted to rescue everyone from the fire. Why does it seem that so many Muslims today are running towards the fire? Running towards the fire by making and turning people into allies of theirs who clearly are enemies of religion, clearly enemies of Islam, enemies of morality, enemies of, 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 of Islam's morality given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's definitely a problem to be, feel that all is well. If you feel that all is well, then it's a problem. If you feel that all is well right now, the Quran tells us, that Allah tells us that we have not left anything out of the book. We have not neglected anything of the book. He also tells us, inna hadha Qur'ana yahdi lilatihi aqwam. Verily this Qur'an, it, it guides to that which is most straight. If that is so, then why are so many people, so many Muslims compromising on so many matters of morality? And it makes one wonder, when I look at Muslims running around with people, even if we understand, of course, we don't want to be disrespectful, uh, uncourteous to people, uh, but Muslims endorsing alternate lifestyles, among other things, and still claiming at the same time that they're 
true to Islam or true to Muslims, it makes you wonder whether or not Muslims actually read the Quran. That we adopt a new morality, a popular morality, and Allah tells us that whoever judges by other than what God has revealed, then those people are ungrateful. Isn't Allah the widest of all judges? So if the Quran has not left out anything, that includes answers to even contemporary questions of confusion related to the start of life, related to biological sex, related to abortion, related to homosexuality and sodomy, related to social hierarchy, related to matters of patriarchy, all of the hot topics of today, which are dividing people, not just Muslim, dividing people all around the world, that the answers to those questions and those problems are right in the Quran. But it's a, matter of, it's a question of commitment. Do we truly believe in the Quran? Do we believe that, do we truly believe that Allah is the wisest of all judges? Of, of, of all judges? If we wanted, want to answer, if you want an answer to the question about abortion, it's there. Don't kill your children out of, out of, out of fear of poverty, or out of poverty, or out of some other burden. That if you want to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinks about sodomy, do you approach the male members of the human race? And you leave your, the ones that Allah, he created to you, created for you from your spouses, among your wives. Rather, you are an excessive people. You are a people exceeding bounds. You want to talk about social hierarchy and that social hierarchy is evil? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَتَهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا We apportion out to them their provisions from this world. وَرَفَعْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا سِخْرِيَّا And we elevated some of them over others. Who did this? Allah did. He elevated some of them over others. He gave us some more than others. Why? so that some will place others in their service. But the mercy of your Lord is better than all that they amass. But there's so many issues and questions that can be answered just by opening the book, opening the Quran. And I'll conclude with the following verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he reminds us that he doesn't need us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need us, brothers and sisters. That you're not Muslim simply because you say you are. That you're not God's people simply because you claim to be. That you're God's people because you support God's cause. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu man yartadda minkum an deenihi fasofa yati allahu bi qawmi yuhibbuhum wa yuhibbuna. Oh, you who believe, whoever among you turns back from his faith, then Allah will bring forth a people whom he will love and they will love him. They will be compassionate. They will be soft and merciful and understanding of the believers. And they will be stern against the enemies of faith, those who oppose faith. They will strive in the way of God without fearing the criticism of those who criticize. Do you fear the criticism that people launch at you, against you, about your Quran, about your deen, about your practice, about your community? But Allah says, you know, Allah's going to bring another people. If you fear that he's going to bring another people, we don't want to fear any of that. That is the bounty of God he gives to whomever he pleases and he is wasi'a, alim. And then he goes on, he says, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا 
your true allies, or who? Your true allies are Allah and His Messenger, and those who believe. Those who establish their prayers, they pay their zakat and they bow humbly to Allah. And those who take Allah and His Messenger and those who believe as their allies, then the party of God, they are the victorious ones. They are the victorious ones. And then he says after this, Ya ayyihaladina amanu, la takhidu ladina takhadu dina kum huzuwa wa laiba, mina ladina utu kitaba min kablikum wal kufara uliya. Oh, you who believe, do not take as allies those who take your religion, they take your faith as a source of derision and a source of play from those who were given the book before you and the rejecters of faith. And be conscious of Allah. Keep your duty for Allah, towards Allah if you truly are believers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make us among the true believers, people who support his deen, support his way, and support his cause. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen, Masalat, Wassalam, Ara Ashraf al Anbiya, Wassayyid al Mursaleen, Nabiyyina Muhammad, and Mala Ali, Musahim, Ismail, Ismail, in Allah, who are a cut to Saluna and in Nabi, Ya Yahaladina Amanu, Salu Arihi, Wassalim, Muslima, Allah, my Isa Islam, Muslimin, Allah, my Isa Islam, Muslimin, Allah, my Isa Islam, Muslimin, Allah, my Habib Elena Iman, Allah, my Habib Elena Iman, Allah, my Habib Elena Iman. وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت سميع عليم وتبارينا إنك أنت تباب الرحيم اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات واغفرنا اللهم معهم بفضل إحسانك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اقسم لنا من خشتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون به علينا مصيبات الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجع ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا وانصرنا على من عادانا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخاف خفينا ولا, ولا يرحمنا اللهم لا تدعنا ذنبا إلا كفرت ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا إن نسلك الجنة وما يقرب إليها من قول معمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما يقرب إليها من قول ما عمل ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أذاب النار وقنا أذاب النار وقنا أذاب النار وصل الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الأخيار وسلم تسليما كثيرا وسبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المصرين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة